Hi, it's Miss Bianca, and today we are going to be getting back into our Earth Day Activities book, where we are going to be learning about ecosystems. If you could turn with me to page seven, that'd be great. Um, so in this lesson, you will explain how living and non-living things interact in an ecosystem. So first of all, let's figure out, you know, what an ecosystem is. So an ecosystem is made up of all of the living and non-living things in an area. This can also include plants, animals, other living things that make up the communities of life in an area. An ecosystem also includes non-living materials, water, rock, soil, sand. Um, some places that could make up an ecosystem are like a swamp, a prairie, an ocean, a forest, um, and the list goes on and on, but those are just a few. So pretty much in every ecosystem, each living thing plays a role. So there's a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer. So um, with that being said, that kind of breaks it down into our feeding levels. So it's basically a food chain um, which describes the order in which matter and energy move through the feeding levels of an ecosystem. So the levels of a food chain are the same across all ecosystems. There's producers, consumers, and decomposers. To get more into the consumers, there are also primary consumers, secondary consumers, as well as tertiary consumers. Um, the decomposers, so the producers obviously produce the energy, the consumers then eat the energy, um, which transfers up into the decomposers. Um, the decomposers in the food chain break down the dead organisms and natural waste. The consumers also at the top. So pretty much the um, the tertiary consumers are called the top predators. They have no predators whatsoever. Instead of their population size going down by, you know, um, going up the food chain, their population size is controlled through competition. So pretty much, like I said, the energy flow is the main source of energy in all of the ecosystems. It comes from the sun. Um, as energy moves through the ecosystem, um, much of it is lost at each feeding level as heat. So this is the main reason why a few food chains have more than five feeding levels. So if you want to go ahead and turn with me to page nine, we'll go ahead and get started on our energy pyramid. So first of all, you have your producers at the bottom, um, which, like I said, will produce the energy that each consumer needs. So a producer could be any, like I said earlier, could be anything like plants. You're more than welcome to draw. You're more than welcome to write. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put uh, plants for our producers. So once you put plants down, and I mean, that could be anywhere from, let's say, grass flowers, things like that. So your primary consumers are going to be some, an animal that will feed off the grass or the, the flowers, some kind of plant, some kind of green. So for primary consumers, I'm going to go ahead and put rabbits. You know, rabbits will eat, will eat the grass. So once the rabbits eat the grass, the secondary consumers are going to be an animal that feed off of rabbits. Um, so I would say, let's say snakes. So snakes feed off the rabbits. So basically the, the plants transfer the energy to the rabbits. The rabbits eat the grass, which they have their own energy now. They transfer their energy into the snakes. So what is an animal that eat snakes. It has to be bigger than it. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and think, let's put hawk. You know, they're in the sky. They see, they see the snake. Um, so they get their energy from the snake. And so pretty much that is just a short energy pyramid. Um, just a real quick one that we went ahead and did. But I encourage all of you to explore an ecosystem. It could be, like I said, a pond, a lake, a beach, a garden. Um, I have a short, a little pond right outside of my apartment. And, you know, not saying that I saw, you know, 
rabbits i saw snakes i did see a hawk i did see a lot of plants um but you know sometimes snakes and rabbits are kind of harder to see i do see them you know throughout um throughout that little area uh quite often but maybe i, I didn't see them in that observation time um, but i know they're there so pretty much i encourage y'all to go to your local pond your lake your beach or your garden Kind of record your ob observations about the living things in the ecosystem. Um, you're more than welcome to use this pyramid. And I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. Thanks, guys.